Oh, good morning. 612. Sun actually is beginning to crack through here. Oh, you're a little early, aren't you? It's happening. I mean, it's more uh, uh, the sunrise is coming earlier. Before you know it, we'll be driving in, and uh, it will be uh, daylight. Uh, So, uh, mostly sunny today with a high of 50. Tomorrow, 57. 60s by Friday. 68 Saturday. 71 on Sunday. It looks like clear sunshine all the way through. I know. It's great. Yeah. This is going to be a nice uh, few days as we're making our way into the weekend. All right. So, um, yesterday, Donald Trump at the uh, at, at the base out at uh, Griffiths. I know I keep calling it the base. But he was in one of the hangars. Big crowd. He made some headlines. Made a few mistakes, I guess, and quoted a few people that Maybe he shouldn't have quoted that are supporting him. There were some little things like that. But basically saying that the, uh, the Republican Party is really teaming up against him. And they're cheating, well, which is ridiculous. Uh, yeah. uh, if only he would have taken a civics lesson when he was in high school or prep school or private school, wherever you want. Right? Yeah, he, um, he opened with some comments, of course, on the local economy, and he asked... Uh, is anybody working up here? And then right went into his whole, he didn't like how the delegates were awarded. He kept calling Cruz Lion Ted, which he's done all along. And uh, he got into a few different things. I didn't see the miss. What, did you say there was a miss? Yeah, he quoted somebody that uh, that uh, supports him as an endorsed him. I forgot who it was. But it turns out that this is actually a guy that um, that is uh, that is actually running a portion of uh, Ted Cruz's campaign. So when he heard his name mentioned, he stepped up and tweeted out, uh, sorry to say this, but I'm cruising to the White House with Ted Cruz. Andrew Domenio. I also noticed that uh, with regard to what his comments were from a local standpoint, I would have liked to have heard him talk more specifically about central New York and Rome in general. It was... You know, all, all the manufacturing uh, you, jobs. You can't expect you, that you, of a You mentioned that, but this is a presidential candidate. And and you're not going to, he's not running for, for state senate. No, uh, no. Which I know you I know. know that. But I, I, I think that I have to say to you that traditionally a presidential candidate is not going to sit there and talk about local politics and local. I mean, they'll they'll hit you on the, if there's a big issue, like if our water was uh, was filled with lead, that might be a, a big topic because it's a national issue, but they're going to be hit, they're going to be hitting the national issues. So I think he it wants them more. all to he run the boilermaker. He was upset with us yesterday because uh, Trump wasn't mentioning the area. He did a little bit, but he wasn't mentioning the area. And you, you, I, in fairness, you can't really expect that no. out of a presidential candidate. No, he's not going to tailor his uh, his forty five minutes to Albany and Buffalo and Rochester and right. Utica and every stop. That now, I will say that um, that uh, that Hillary did and some of the other candidates have when they were in Flint. But that became a national issue. It became right. an issue that they're that they're running on. Like, Andrew, if the base had just closed, Trump would have been probably all over it. Right? Yeah, he would yeah. have asked the same question, though. Is anybody working up Maybe here? Working here. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. All right. Fred, you're uh, you're talking over there. Hula hoop Fred from Rome. Is in. He was there. He has his Donald Trump take America, make America great again. And how was it? Are you uh, are you are you registered to vote? I am registered. Okay, as a My civic duty. As a Republican. As an American. Okay, good. It's oh, good. everyone's it's a third party. opportunity yeah. and yeah. chance <laughs> to make a difference. It is. So if except, you don't vote, except in the Republican primary, are you going to vote for Trump in the primary? I'm going to vote for the one that makes sense. Okay. For the one who is. I've never date. heard of the American Party, though. Which party primary will you be voting in? It's a minor party. He's it's a minor be- party. And <laughs> okay. For the hula hoop. So you're party. gonna you're gonna vote in the general election. I will. Six thousand yes. people there. Would you say that's uh, pretty? Uh, that's pretty fair? the uh, number that was given out. Five thousand. Yeah. I mean, these people were packed from the VIP barricade. Yeah. To the main barricade where I was, I got there at one. He didn't come on until like five forty-five. Yeah, I saw some and of that. People on TV. were packed to the walls, past the media. Now, yeah, if well, there were it, windows, yeah, I'd be thinking to the window, to the wall. Okay, but there were no windows. All right. No, thanks for your clever uh, this morning. I appreciate <laughs> well, it, um, <laughs> Andrew. One thing I one thing I really liked is that uh, he kept calling the 
the media liars, and he would kind of refer to the back of the room. You know those people in the back of the room, the, those liars? Yeah, that's why I would not have wanted to go because we would have been corralled into the, uh, into the media thing, and he just trashes the media. Um, and, but then, then he'll use the media, and, you know, the media, we're like um, rats being fed rat poison because uh, we just keep coming back because if he gives you a little nibble, you're going to be right there and because he- that's your story. Uh, despite what he's going to call you, and he's it's got crazy. he's got these funny you know regular mannerisms where he'll point and thumb up, like he'll do this awkward thumb and then put his th- uh, point and then his thumb up, and then he'll do this thing also where um, he'll say thank you, I think, or because he won't exactly hear what the person's saying. So, <laughs> right, thank right. you, thank you, I agree with you. I think I, I agree with all <laughs> yeah. of you. And then and, and, and the, one of the best things that he uh, that he had said was. You know, you know, I, I love women. Nobody respects women more than Donald Trump. And then there was one group of women. I, I wish I knew who she was. I want to find that woman. She said what she said. There's nothing that Donald Trump can do that would make me not vote for him. Oh, wow. Uh, Fred, I, I'm going to point to you and I want you to talk. OK, not right yet. Um, OK, so. So you saw a lot of his. So I guess what I'm saying in short is that he did a lot of the things yesterday that he's he's known for doing yeah. at, at all the rallies. Except I think everybody was well behaved. There was really no um there was no fighting, right. no no taking punches at protesters or anything like that. Well, and- which I think is positive. Although that did happen in Albany, somebody took a took a punch and the guy's ex- explanation was, "Hey, she came in my space. <laughs> I have a personal space here. I'm going to protect my personal space." This Trump stuff is rubbing off on these rednecks. So he, somebody was swearing at one point, and I did hear him say, uh, "Yes, yeah, yes, that's right." It, it, although he was, he swore he was vulgar. I don't know. Uh, the other part is this whole thing. This whole thing about how the the uh, the process is not democratic. That the Republican Party is cheating, and uh, and and people are buying into this, folks. Your Republican and Democrat primaries are not elections. They're primaries. That is, they are not Democratic events. They're not. They never have been, and they never will be. I mean, think about it. George Bush would not have been president for a second term if we were a complete democracy when it comes to our voting because he didn't win the popular vote. So at the end of the day, this is a party. You belong to, if you're a Republican, you belong to a club. And the club makes its rules, and the rules include these delegates. Now, you might not like that, and that might mean you're, you're going to want to become an independent and no longer be a Republican. But the rules have not changed. Uh, Ted Cruz has a ground game that Donald Trump doesn't have or maybe is trying to get now, and he's out. Doing what you do. He's out trying to grab delegates, and that's what happened in Colorado. But here's where, and it's not cheating. You're absolutely one hundred percent not. You right. can say you can say it's not representative of the vote. Correct. But it's not cheating. It's not cheating. But it's interesting. Two things. First of all, this comes on the heels of you know Trump's meeting with Reince Priebus this, for the second time, at least second right. or third time, and then prior to that, you know, the Republican Party had said. Please, Donald, you have to promise you're going to back the candidate. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as Trump mm. becomes the candidate apparent, then the Republican Party pulls back. So while it's not cheating, some would fairly argue that the process may be unfair. They're asking Donald Trump to play by the process ethical is rules the, that they're not the willing to play by. The process is not fair, and they don't need to play by those rules. And right. here's why. Because the whole process is built so that the Republicans— and the Democrats as well. This is why uh, Bernie Sanders will never be the, the nominee. He can't be the nominee. It won't happen. If Bernie Sanders wins, somebody else is getting in. The Democrat Party will not allow Bernie Sanders never. because he can't win. And that is the fi- that that is the focus here. The party reserves the right to select a candidate that can win. And they've come to the conclusion that, A, Donald Trump is dangerous, and, B, he can't win. So they have every right as a party. And folks, just think about this. Look at what goes on in your own backyard and the in your county party and the the, the, your uh, your little the little races that you run. Many times they go right. You're completely unopposed. Well, that's because 
the party has selected who they feel they want to get in. And maybe they stay quiet or however they go about doing it. But this is all about the party selecting the people they feel represent the values of the party. That doesn't necessarily mean the popular vote in these primaries right. is going to, that's going to be the case. They, say, they may say, well, the people voted this way, but we feel as a party that we can't win that way. So here's the direction we're going to go. Now, that's just, yeah, maybe not fair. But it's the way it's always been. It's always been this way. I do believe, though, if he got to 1237, he would be the nominee. I think so, too. And yeah. and listen, you, uh, it, it, what is the rule in tennis? I like to watch tennis, but I never completely understand the whole thing. But you have <laughs> to get... Too. You kind of have to get to a certain spot. I never know. You listen to the announcers and like, okay, this is it. And then you know, okay, somebody's going to win Wimbledon here this time around. But I never, there are rules. You have to get to a certain point or the game just keeps going on. You have to win by two. Okay. But they don't, they don't say if no one wins by two, they don't come in and say, wait a minute. We're changing the rules. You won by one, so you're the winner. It doesn't work that way. Right. This, this, this process of selecting a candidate does not work that way. How is it you can walk away and say, I'm going to get to 1237, but then you don't get to 1237 and you say, it's not fair that I'm not the candidate. You can't, you can't have it both ways. Right. The rules are the rules, and on the first ballot, if Trump doesn't get there, these delegates have the right to go any way they want to go. And you have Ted Cruz that's really in the background doing that ground game and, and making sure that the delegates are stacked in his favor. I, I, I think it's going to be bad because I think it's going to create a third party. But to say it's unfair and it's illegal and it's all of this stuff is just, just ridiculous. Uh, Tanya Powers, I didn't see that she was actually there, and here she is. Uh, we were in Rome yesterday, Trump in Rome. Uh, Tanya Powers still griping about the fact that uh, the things just aren't fair. Yes, uh, he, he seems to have a, a problem with, especially Colorado, in the way they chose uh, their delegates for Ted Cruz. He was not, uh, he didn't appreciate that. Yeah, uh, and then there was a town hall afterwards, and um, uh, again, I mean, we were just talking about it. It's the party. This is the party process. I, I'm not sure that it results in a, in a third party run. It could, but the process has always been the same, hasn't it? As far as I know, it has. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't think anybody, uh, you know, drastically changed a whole lot of stuff this year. Um, you know, and it's, I mean, <laughs> other people who've made the point, Ted Cruz included, that, um, you know, Donald didn't seem to have a problem with <laughs> with the process right. as long as he's been winning. When he's winning. I mean, they, they kind of got a point because, yeah. you know, we, did, we didn't start hearing any problems with the process until there started to be, you know, problems with, with other people, you know, occasionally winning one. Hey, did, uh, and Ted Cruz seems to have just given up on, on New York, do you think? Well, yeah, I, I don't think with the 15% polling numbers he's going to, yeah. I mean, they, they, they're they looking ahead to California, obviously, because that's where he's been campaigning a lot lately. And, I mean, I guess, you know, that's a smart move. Why throw money, you know, sure. put good money after bad, so to speak. And Kasich seems to feel that he has the uh, the pathway to victory in New York, and he has an interesting strategy. He does have an interesting strategy. I, I heard him yesterday. I went and I covered his uh, address to the Women's Republican, Women's National Republican Club uh, here in Manhattan, and uh, he gave a uh, a very. It was a very interesting tone of the speech. It was called Two Paths, and you know, uh, it was a it was a thought out address. It was he was standing there before this blue curtain to background and these four American flags, and yeah. uh, he gave this this address that that sounded you know. It was a very Reagan-esque presidential kind of address. It was very interesting to watch. And then when he left, it wasn't to, you know, some popular music like we normally see the candidates leave to. It was to Stars and Stripes Forever, which I thought was wow. interesting. Yeah, that, that was a little bit of a change, I thought. I, I read that he his goal is uh, he feels if they have a, a record turnout, he can win. That they need a record turnout in New York. In New York? Get, in New York, or with a record turnout, he can beat Donald Trump. You know, uh Something's got to be said for thinking positive. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you got to hand it to him. I yeah. mean, you know, he, and he's honestly he's doing he's doing pretty well with the polling. Yeah, uh, no. Not as good as Donald Donald Trump is, obviously, because Donald Trump's leading. I think what, but depending on which poll you look at, there's 54, there's 57, there's 60 percent polling. Yeah. I mean, he's doing extremely well here. And for us, Tanya, I gotta I gotta tell you that uh, we have uh, Donald Trump in uh, in nearby Rome right here uh, last night. Mm -hmm. You had um, uh, they were all over the place. K6 appearing. You've got one in Albany. I mean, we've never seen attention like this because we've never been a part of a 
of a primary that mattered in, in many, many years. Exactly. Uh, so many New York voters have told me the same thing, that they're just so excited that they feel like their vote finally counts. I mean, it always counts, but they feel like they're really going to get to make a difference this time, and they are. Uh, Tiny G. Powers, I appreciate your time. Thanks sure. so much. Okay, got a break. Hold on tight. We're coming back. Christine has news on a uh, Wednesday morning at WMBX.